sometimes my cocaine addiction endangered my life as a party fan of the rich and famous. Like that time at a gig in a catering hall in Howard Beach, cue the Godfather theme with costumes from Goodfellas, the host was rich, but famous only by virtue of his 24 criminal indictments. He had so many racketeering charges, his nickname was Rico. <laughs> two, guys, two guys dressed in expensive European suits that barely fit on their Ford pickup frames kept coming through our dressing room like they owned the place. Uh, our stage manager would have objected, but he was also a dancer, and dancers like to keep their legs in good working order. Plus, these guys probably did own the place, or at least they owned the owner. At first, I thought they were checking out the female dancers. Actually, they only wanted to use our private bathroom. Over and over again. I had a nose for this kind of activity, and my nose picked up a scent. And that scent was nose candy. The little orange vial in my pocket was currently empty, and I had two more hours of party cheerleading to go. So the next time the soldiers marched into the bathroom, I decided they probably wouldn't mind if, you know, I joined them. So I trotted in with a fake look of surprise that said, What? Are you sniffing cocaine? I'm cool with that. And actually, I'd like some too. That brilliant strategy could have gotten my knees capped or some other cliche organized crime injury. But for some reason, probably angels, these guys pegged me for one of their fellow addicts and offered me a gigantic spoonful. They were, however, clearly not smiling. And yet, that was that tiny pile looking like a majestic snow-capped peak, glowing with the shavings of God's white beard. And it was my favorite kind of Coke. Free Coke. <laughs> the grim-faced giants were starting to wonder why I was hesitating. Did they think I'm a cop? The gangsters kill cops? Only if they own them, right? And then, as if on automatic, my nose jerked down involuntarily and hoovered up close to $100 worth of booger sugar. <sighs> One of the two hoods looked coldly into my eyes and said, Best that's the bad, bet that's the best coke you ever had. Actually, my roommate's brother-in-law was a Colombian drug lord, so no, it wasn't the best coke I ever had. But my head bobbed up and down in agreement. FYI, since this was our dressing room, I wasn't wearing a shirt. The guy looked at my skinny pectorals and said, You tell anybody about this, I'll put your chest where your back is. <laughs> Amazingly, I didn't feel high anymore. <laughs> on high alert, but not high. I eased my way out of the bathroom, put on a silly shirt with a tie that clashed, and went out into the party to make people laugh. But I didn't need cocaine to make uh, to seek out mortal danger. Like the time at that affair at this high-end country club on the North Shore, Gatsby Land, where the theme was communism. The members were of the moneyed class, so having the entertainment dress up as famous, famous communists was their idea of a jolly good fun. <laughs> I drew the short straw and got Leon Trotsky. <laughs> Me and Vladimir Lenin walked around the crowded party tent saying things like, Hey Vlad, you ain't got no class. We were a big hit. Until we got to the serving line. The large fellow who was dishing up the goulash looks at me and says, I don't serve commies. I kill them. From the look in his eye, I could see that he probably had killed some communists in their own country before he became the poster child for untreated PTSD. I guessed that he was a motorcycle enthusiast because he wore a t-shirt that said, I'd rather see my sister in a whorehouse than on the back of a Jap bike. Real t-shirt. <laughs> Staying in character, I said, I'm just back from the Eastern Front where we stopped Hitler. Could you just give me some chicken Kiev? The guy almost jumped over the table. Uh, you crummy bastard! We won WW2! It was a team effort, the Bubba. What'd you call me? Nothing, but the Harley Davidson shop called, and they said they're through changing the oil on your girlfriend. <laughs> I mean your hog. <laughs> <laughs> then he did jump over the table. <laughs> Luckily for me, he didn't quite clear it, catching one foot in the beef stroganoff and bringing the entire serving table over onto the fine white summer linens that the club members wore so uniformly. Security jumped him. Two big black guys just to add insult to the cracker's injury. They hustled him out of the party and I never saw him again. Luckily, if he ever sees me, he won't recognize me. He's still looking for Leon Trotsky.
Thank you. <laughs>